Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Staffordshire series, 38 civil parishes covering an area to the north and west of Burton-upon-Trent. It's a lovely part of the world, so let's go and see some of it. Welcome back to East Staffordshire, everybody. Now, today we're starting outside an old mill. And as you can see, this mill was built by Richard Arkwright, the inventor of the spinning frame in 1781 and 82. And this is now used as a school called the JCB Academy. And there it is, partially partially used anyway it's kind of next door to the mill there we go and you can find this in a place whose uh, place name is very difficult to get right I had to look up how to pronounce the name of this place this is what I thought was Rochester but it's actually pronounced Roaster <laughs> Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. More Staffordshire for you today as we explore the village of Roaster, located on the Derbyshire Staffordshire border. Here, we're about four miles north of Utoxeter. The village lies on a triangle of land between the River Chernit and River Dove, which to the south run into each other. Water is a key feature of this village in a few ways. Roaster dates back to Roman times. A fort was founded on the site in about 69 AD as an intermediate point between Derby and Newcastle under Lyme. After the Romans departed in about 400 AD, the village remained in use by the Anglo-Saxons throughout the Middle Ages. Roaster also once had an abbey and today's walk begins at that site. In 1781, Richard Arkwright bought an old corn mill on the River Dove and converted it to a water-powered cotton mill. This would introduce industry to Roaster and the village grew as a result. During the 1960s though, the village lost a lot of its character when many of its houses in its centre were demolished to make way for shops and flats. You don't have to look far for the biggest employer here these days. This is where you'll find the world headquarters of JCB get ready to see their famous yellow logo everywhere. This was a fun one. Time to go for another walk, folks. This is Roaster. We begin today's episode at Abbey Fields, the site of St Mary's Augustinian Priory. It was founded between 1141 and 1146 by Richard Bacon, the half-brother-in-law of Ranulf, 6th Earl of Chester. There's no trace of the abbey above ground now, but there are earthworks, lots of them. Much of the building was dismantled for its reusable materials, and the land was sold to Richard Trentham, the MP for Shropshire. Adjacent to Abbey Fields is the Church of St Michael. This was constructed in the 13th century. It was mostly rebuilt in the 1800s, although the tower is the original. The building consists of a nave, a north porch, south aisle, chancel, south vestry, and a steeple with a clock face on its western side. 
there's also a cross in its churchyard, which, like the tower, is 13th century. The head is missing, but it remains a scheduled monument. Let's have a little wander around in here. Let's see what we can find. Font to start with. There's the team. Are we signing the guest book, Nikki? Sorry? Somebody else from Someone else from Rotherham. Oh, wow. Hey, we get around a bit, you know. <laughs> we get around a bit. Oh, something to do with... Sorry, we're just, uh, ah. Queen's coronation. Yeah. And some of, the, some of the events in the Queen's life, look. It's like a book about, you know, the Queen and... Yeah. It's okay. interesting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's go up here, we've got towards the altar. It's a bit dark in this area, but... really warm in here isn't it really really warm <laughs> and on the, and on the uh, yeah. side too absolutely gorgeous oh, i like this church good start right let's carry on Next, we go along Dove Lane, and to do that, we pass through the lick gate of St. Michael's Church. This whole structure acts as a war memorial. Then we've got what was Dove First School, a primary school which has since relocated. I'll show you where to shortly. Next to this is the Chalice House, which itself is a former infant school built in 1852. Dove Lane, by the way, used to be known as Dove Street. After a lot of houses, the road becomes Northfield Avenue, and that's where we came across a George VI post box. Now to Ashbourne Road and the village allotments. These are notable here because they're on the site of an old railway line. There were two lines in Roaster. This was the Ashbourne Branch Line, which met the Churnit Valley Line at Roaster Station, the site of which is just to the south of the headquarters of JCB. I tell you, there's plenty of schools and colleges and educational establishments around here and where we're going now is no exception because we're about to encounter that building right there behind these new houses. That is Rycroft Middle School. There are two schools here in fact. Rycroft Middle School is on the left, whilst on the right is Dove C of E Academy, the new site for Dove First School. Here we cross the River Churnet, which makes its first appearance on the channel. This flows through Staffordshire for its entire course. The Churnet Valley is often called Staffordshire's Rhineland or Staffordshire's Little Switzerland, owing to the abundance of steep gorges and banks along its route. The Churnet also feeds this lake. This is a fishing lake which sits to the north of the JCB headquarters. Its official name is the JCB Lake. There are several sculptures around both the lake and alongside the Churnit, the most notable being the Fossa, which is made entirely of digger parts. We're a bit too far away from it here to see it, but I will talk about it later. Here we took a break on a bench overlooking the lake, dedicated to the memory of Simon Kent. You know, we've we've sat here for five minutes just to give a leg give our legs a rest, and we're being invaded. Look, look at all these ducks that have just come out of the lake, all coming to see if we've got food. Well, I'm sorry, guys, we've got nothing. So you're out of luck. You'll have to go and bug somebody else. <laughs> right. When we get up again, we'll be heading over towards that building over there, which is the headquarters of JCB. Time for JCB. 
This enormous building is the world headquarters of perhaps one of the most famous British companies to have ever existed. JCB was founded in Utoxeter in 1945 by Joseph Cyril Bamford. His first vehicle was a tipping trailer made from parts of wartime air raid shelters. In 1950, JCB outgrew its premises in Utoxeter and moved to an old cheese factory here in Roaster. The present factory dates from 1970, but it stands on the site of the original. In 1953, JCB developed the backhoe loader, a tractor-like unit fitted with a loader-style shovel or bucket on the front and a scoop on the rear. Here's an example of the vehicle I'm talking about. Many of the vehicles produced by JCB today are variants of the backhoe loader. And even though the letters JCB are the initials of the company's founder, JCB is often also used as a generic description for any mechanical digger. And even the benches around here all have the JCB logo on them. Yes. Uh, Joseph Cyril Bamford. Joseph Cyril Bamford. Yeah. Okay, that's what JCB stands for. And here's another interesting fact about JCB. If you look over here, you can see, sort of in the distance, a windsock, sort of there. And the reason there's a windsock there is because this little mound you can see in front of the main building is a helipad. And that, and that, yes indeed, yep, yeah, that's the helicopter we saw yesterday. And that's where they land, just there. This next section is centred around this building, the Village Hall, the best venue in the village for all kinds of private functions. It stands in front of a small playground and playing field, and next door there's a nursery. This is First Steps Preschool. In front of both buildings is a patch of land known as the Millennium Green, which features another war memorial for both world wars. Here's a former Primitive Methodist Chapel, which was built in 1888. This itself replaced a previous chapel, which dated back to 1862. That's right next to the green, and so is the parish notice board. Tick roaster off your list, folks. Two down, 36 to go in East Staffordshire. And you can also get a bus in Roaster 2 here. This is the place you need to come if you need the swift service between Ashbourne and Derby. So myself and Nikki, we've just been cogitating the idea of buying the Methodist Chapel. Yeah, 375,000. We don't have the money to do that, but if we did... Donations we... below. <laughs> there needs to be a heck of a lot of donations, Nikki, for 375,000 pounds. Yeah, just on the cost of the bill. Yeah. Anyway, right, next we're going to go down the high street. Now we take a walk down the high street, which would have been one of the streets that developed as a result of Arkwright's Mill in the 18th and 19th centuries. Many of the properties along the high street date from this period. There's a nice selection of local shops these days, including this craft shop, Paula's Petals. At the end of the road, we meet the Red Lion, a three-room traditional drinker's inn, described by Watpub as welcoming and friendly. On the opposite side of the road is the Buttercross, believed to have been erected when the village was granted a market charter by King Henry VI. Both of these buildings overlook a mini roundabout, where Mill Street, Ashbourne Road and the High Street all meet each other. Behind the Buttercross, there's a few more shops, including the local Chippy and the Buttercross Cafe. Food-wise, you're all good here. So Nikki is heading off back to the car, which is in that, direction. that kind of direction. I'm carrying on to finish this route, which means I'm going to go this way towards uh, what looks to be an old garage. I'm not quite sure what it is yet. I'll check it out in a sec. Before I do that, there's an information board under this tree. So I'm going to find out what this is all about before we move on. Let's see. What do you suppose it is, Nikki? Oh, it looks like a village map to me. Ah, suggested walk, heritage trail. Ah, right, okay. 
Yeah, well, we've seen, we've seen most of this already, obviously, because yeah, we, we started down here. That's the site of the abbey. There's the church. We've walked along here. Obviously, we went. Uh, the post box is up here somewhere. Yeah, we went up here. The JCB area is all here. And we've just walked basically up here and ended up there, mm -hmm. is where we are now. And from here, I'm just heading up here. And there's a, a little track somewhere over there. It's not marked on the map that will take me back down towards Mill Street. And then I'll head back down there to where Nikki's about to be. Yeah. This last section takes us up Ashbourne Road onto Church Lane and back to Mill Street. On the way up the former, we pass this garage. On Church Lane, we find a cemetery, an extension of the churchyard of St. Michael's. This contains two Commonwealth war graves. And after going slightly wrong, I found my way back to Mill Street and the local surgery. All that remains is to talk about Tutbury Mill, also known as Richard Arkwright's Mill. The mill stands at the village's eastern end. Once a corn mill, Arkwright turned this into a cotton mill using the power of the River Dove. Arkwright had many more mills, including the famous mill at Cromford in the Derbyshire Dales. We will mention him quite a few times as we travel around. The mill these days forms part of the JCB Academy, which opened in 2010. It's a secondary school which specialises in engineering and business qualifications. So here's a special section about the Fossa, which even though it's a prominent local landmark, getting close enough to it to film it isn't easy. One of a number of sculptures around JCB, it stands next to the B5030, the main north to south route through Roaster, which passes their headquarters. Its name is Latin. The word Fossa literally means digger. Apt then that the structure is made entirely of steel digger parts, don't you think? The Fossa was the largest steel sculpture in Europe at the time of its creation in 1979, but this is a record that's now been overtaken. Even so, it's still a powerful representation of JCB. It weighs 36 tonnes, stands 45 feet high, and the sculpture was created by Valenti Pytel, who himself has a remarkable backstory. He was born in occupied Poland during World War II. The Nazis stole him from his mother and gave him to a Gestapo officer and his childless wife. So here we are then, back with Nikki in the car. 
Back uh, is recovering. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad of that. I uh, I really enjoyed this. This has been a really good mm. walk around. It's a long walk. Don't get me wrong. If you want to attempt the exact same route that I did, although don't mess up the bit on Church Lane like I did. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's worth it if you uh, if you want to see the headquarters of JCB and an old mill built by Richard lot, Arkwright. The town's got a lot of history about it anyway. I mean, there's a lot of interesting buildings and stuff. And if you just look sort of beyond the obvious, you know, then, then you'll see so much. Yeah, you will. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we are going to be back in East Staffordshire um next week uh, but in a different area and i am so excited for the next episode you will not want to miss it for now this has been the parish of roaster and i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out mm -hmm.